your blood is made up of a fluid called plasma. And in that plasma are masses of red blood cells. Ah, yeah, those red cells give the red blood its red colour, making it red. See? I know loads about blood. Yeah, OK, Mark. Now, red blood cells deliver oxygen from the lungs all over the body. Right. It, is that a good thing? Well, if they didn't, you'd be dead. Oh, quality. Uh, what are those white things? Those white blood cells fight infection. And what are those tiny things? Ah, now, these are teeny tiny cell fragments that circulate in the blood. Oh, yeah, I was just about to say that. Well, yes, we're not sure what they do just yet, but we're still investigating. Right, we'll have to have a closer look at that scab. Catch you later. Cool, thanks, Professor. Wow, blood is really complicated, which I already definitely knew. It's that time again where we welcome a top scientist onto the show. It's my great pleasure to introduce a man who knows almost as much about blood as me. I think I probably know a great deal more about the blood than you, Marcus. It's Charles Drew. It's so horrible. Nah. <laughs> OK, thanks, Charles. No, thank you, Mark. Did I tell you that I helped to develop the blood bank? I also discovered that while people have different blood groups, everybody has the same kind of plasma. Another little discovery that helped save countless lives. <laughs> OK. Now, Chaz, uh, you and me both know loads about blood, so I thought it'd be great if you and me could do a blood transfusion together. No, I, I don't think that's wise, Mark. I uh, don't think you know enough about so the blood. So this woman needs a blood transfusion. And this is our donor. What is this? Don't know everything, do you, Charlie? This is a dog. You, you can't give a human dog's blood. It's totally different to human blood. Yeah, we have to get it from a human. cat. Human, human, human. Yeah, totally, yeah, I knew that. Um, Glenda? OK, this is Glenda. She's a human. She's going to be giving us some blood today. What are you doing? Giving a patient human blood, mate. Try and keep up. No, you can't just give her anyone's blood. It has to be a match, the same blood group. What now? Everybody has slight differences in what makes up their blood. In fact, there are many different types of blood group. You can't just give this woman Glenda's blood unless she's in the same blood group as the patient. Thanks, Glenda. Wow, there's a lot to remember, isn't there? <laughs> I'm starting to think you know absolutely nothing about blood. Well, that's where you're wrong, mate, because I know loads about blood. You thought plasma was a type of TV set. Yeah, mate, I probably even know more than you about bloods, but you're the guest on the show and I didn't want to embarrass you in front of everyone at home watching it on the TV, which for many people will be a plasma. Unbelievable. It's so horrible. So today's big interview is with eminent Italian scientist Rita Levi Monta... Look, can I just call you Rita? <laughs> of course. Uh... Do not muck this that's up, That's a pretty Mark. impressive hair there, Reitz. Oh, thank you. I keep bats in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I am famed for my sense of humour. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I am famed for my Nobel Prize. Oh, yeah, Nobel Prize. Yeah, yeah. So, Nobles, they're like Oscars, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting them for movies, you get them for... sciencing. What did you get yours for, Reitz? My work in isolating something called nerve growth factor, a protein that affects how fast cells grow. During World War II, I set up a secret science lab uh, using needles and tweezers from around my home. If I'd have been discovered, I would have been imprisoned. Ah, uh, epic, epic. As a fellow scientific genius, can I have a go? Of course! Uh, my experiments involve mouse tumours and snake venom. Oh, oh right, right, um, get that. Continue. Luckily, I could do most of my experiments on eggs. Nobody suspected me, especially as I could eat the experiments afterwards. <laughs> you know what, Reitz? We're like genius peas in a pod. Not. When I first met you, I thought you were like this like, really sweet old lady. Now I've realised you're just weird. Even for a programme called Horrible Science. What are you going to do next? Punch a penguin? Hmm. Is your vernicas being stimulated again? Hmm? No. Hmm. Then I theorise you are no scientist and nothing but a blithering idiot. 
So. Think again, creepy Rita, the raw egg eater. <laughs> if you care to inspect my nethers. Rita, Rita, I'm so sorry. Mark's having a bit of an off day. Please bear with him. Uh, no, I'm not. Zip it, Rita. I, I don't... No, sorry. I don't mean you. Um, please accept my sincerest apologies. We here at Horrible Science have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I don't. <laughs> oh, please. Uh... I survived the fascists during the war. It'll take more than an idiot in some novelty knickers to annoy me. <laughs> now, would you like to hear about my founding the European Brain Research Institute? Nah. Mm. I have had enough. Rita, please, oh. just bear with me. Oh! <gasps> my mice! You keep mice in your bag? Seriously, who are you, lady? Well, Rita famously took mice with her to Rio so she could conduct experiments on them. They're valuable, Mark. Well, they were? Never have I ever seen such unscientific conduct. Idiocy! Oh, Tim. Timmy, Tim, Tim. Tim, Tim, Taru. Tim. I wish you could summon up wasps to help you out and to brutally eat your enemies. That poor caterpillar. What a terrible way to die. Whoa! Careful with the D word around Tim, all right? What do you mean, D word? I have over 2,475,006 words in my data bank, beginning with D. It's die. He doesn't want us to say die or dead, death, deceased, demise, departed, daisy pushing, or definitely done for. So insensitive. Come on, Tim. Let's go. These guys are dead stupid. Sorry, mate. Mark, where do you think you're going? You've got a TV show to present. We're live. I know, but Tim really needs me. If you don't get back out there right now, you're dead to me. Do you understand? What? How could you? Where are you going? Come on! Right. OK. No presenter. Um, go to plan B. Plan B. Um, haven't got a plan B. Oh, uh, plan B. Um, Professor McTaggart, go to the brain dump early. I'll try and get Mark back. Good afternoon, and yo to all you young people out there. As an international superstar scientist, I've been pretty much everywhere on Earth, and I know pretty much everything. See that huge smudge of green across the top half of the planet? Pine trees. And those green blobs across the south? Rainforests. Basically, like someone on a mad trolley dash, plants are all over the shop. And on top of all the plants on the land, there's the trillions and trillions of algae that live in the sea. Now, if you put every living thing on Earth together and weighed it, you'd find that over 90% of this massive weight is plants and fungi. Which means that animals account for just a measly 10% of living things. And that includes overweight whales, pregnant elephants, and people who eat chips for breakfast. Double E. And that was my brain dump. Uh, Professor Pasteur, uh, sorry, sorry, can I call you Louis? No. OK. Uh, can I just say how thrilled we are to have such a legendary scientist on the show? Um, is everything to your satisfaction? No. Look, this is, uh, is disgraceful. Oh, oh, dear, that is disgraceful, yes. Uh, sorry, what am I looking at exactly? I... Germs. Millions of filthy, dirty germs. Fortunately, I have brought along some disinfectant and another handkerchief. OK. Uh, that's not weird at all. Uh, c can I get you anything to eat? I have a single cream cracker served in a vacuum-sealed jar. Of course you will. Uh, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Awkward. Our guest on Horrible Science this week is the deadliest enemy the germ world has ever had. Please welcome Louis Pasteur. <coughs> Louis Pasteur, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. Have you washed your hands? Well, uh, not recently, no. Then no. <clears throat> OK, uh, so you were apparently absolutely obsessed with germs. Well, I would not say that. Obsessed is exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, but you were always trying to hunt them down, weren't you? We've actually got some footage of you here at the dinner table. Now, that is some pretty dedicated germ hunting right there. 
Did you do that all the time? Well, of course, and I have made many interesting discoveries. Although our friends did stop coming around for dinner after a while. And you were the first to prove that... <coughs> oh, <coughs> disgusting. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, it's been all day. Yep. Where are you? My little beauties. Ah, there you are. Yep, yep, can Is I have that? I need that. Yes, uh, As part of the interview. Yep. As I was saying, you were the first to prove that diseases were caused by germs, weren't you? Indeed. Back then, scientists didn't believe that something so tiny could kill a human being. But through my experiments, I was able to show that many terrible diseases, such as uh, anthrax and Tebe, was a work of germs. But <laughs> I wouldn't say that I was obsessed. <coughs> Oh, <coughs> would you mind just maybe wearing this? Is that okay? What? No, mate, it's no, a no, career. No, it is better for no, all no, of us. This is Thank what you. the, this is what the, this is what the fans want to see. They want to... They want to... Okay. Merci. Right. Uh, but you also developed cures for diseases, didn't you? Like rabies and anthrax, saving thousands of lives. Ooh. What was that noise? It oh. sounded like a tiny elephant trapped inside a tuba. Yeah, um... I've actually had a little bit of an upset stomach all day, and I was kind of hoping you could maybe give me some advice, because... <clears throat> I think you people are disgusting. No, do not touch me. No, leave me alone. I am going back to the 19th century, and I'm going to take an hot bath. Uh, how do I get... To... Um, Louis Pasteur, thanks very much. Oh, no, no yeah. dirty boys make me feel sick. <laughs> Yourself an insane look at what they don't tell you in the science books from inner space to the universe. We're on a case to face the worst. It's icky and it's whiffy and it's yucky and it's squishy, but we love it.